I first found the rescue, I was just on Facebook and I just put in the search engine Kerry Blue Terrier, not thinking for one minute anything would come up because I'd never ever met anyone who owned a Kerry Blue Terrier. Went on to one and I got chatting to a girl and then I think through her, she shared the rescues, chats with House Walk. So I went with Alfie, met Mark, met up with other people. There was a rescue, a dog who'd just been rescued, a Kerry Blue, and he was being looked after by Cumbria Animal Rescue. Okay. Uh, Rex, Rex, who's now living with Helen and her family in Scotland. And we, Rex was being brought to the walk by the rescue group. And we were all there waiting with bated breath. And he was a little bit late because they had traffic problems. And it was almost like a celebrity arriving when he pulled up. <laughs> oh, baby. <laughs> but that, that was my first sort of uh, interaction with the rescue. We're leading up to Christmas and it's, mm-hmm. it's a really big time for us to try and um, raise some valuable funds for the rescue. Uh, and we will be launching a, a proper sort of Christmas themed shop with various lovely gifts um, on, the, on the website soon. Get more it, of those poo bags. We've got so many hundreds <laughs> of those white, was it, what is it called? Do a poo for a Kerry yeah, Blue? Every, every poo. Yeah, every every poo, do a, do a poo. Do a poo. Have you seen them? <laughs> Every poo it's... saves a blue or something. Uh, yeah, something like that. They were really heavy grade yeah. plastic, the ones we got. Yeah. We got like three or four hundred of them and they all came yeah, through. Yeah. I mean, it depends how, how big the poos are, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. And the calendars were good. I know they've yeah. done the calendars. The calendars, I always buy the calendars. Yeah, we've got the, the cover image of the new one is just absolutely lovely. Well, I think yeah. one of the things as well is the fact that obviously we all do different jobs. We've all got different skill sets and things. <clears throat> and it's, it's quite a good thing that really everybody can do something. I mean, Susie's quite sort of shy about it, but she set up the bank account for the, for the charity because she works at Weatherby's Bank. So she got them a charitable bank account. You know? And there's always different things that different people can do. There's been so many fantastic fundraising, you know, Shona with, with oh, um, Betty. Oh, um, that. Yeah, that was great. Absolutely amazing. I mean, yeah. And, she, and she's still out there doing all now. <laughs> and I think Emma's done some done some runs and and things. Yeah. And it just and there's other you know millions of others, and I can't remember. Oh yeah, loads. Everyone's efforts to raise money for the rescue, whether it's undertaking a small event like a coffee morning or doing something large like a walking challenge. Uh, every penny that is raised, either through these charity events or spent through our website, goes straight to looking after the carries that are in need. And that's exactly what we're all here to do. When taking Roxy out for walks, do you use a harness on her? She's so easy. Um, we, we have got a harness. Uh, as soon as the harness appears, Roxy does a runner. She absolutely hates it. So we, we generally walk in a collar and lead. And in fact, sometimes when we're very local, she walks off the lead. She wow. she's really good. I've never known a Kerry like her. Because we live in a village anyway. We live on the edge of the village. <clears throat> we're very lucky. We've got a local grassland just on the other side of our fence. And I'm sure the dogs think it's our garden. I mean, <laughs> people walk through it, but anybody comes through it and they will both bark at them because they think it's our front lawn. And it's actually <laughs> a field. <laughs> <clears throat> so twice a day, we can just go out there and take them for, you know, 10, 15 minute play at lunchtime or just before we go to work. And well, that's they stay off lead, but if you go anywhere unusual, it's always a harness because obviously that's where you need that extra support, really. Yeah. Uh, so obviously this time of year, it's getting darker earlier. You're, you've got a basically black dog. Yeah. Do you go for like the this light? This is why we had to put the cover on the sofa. Look, we've got a black leather sofa, so we had to put <laughs> this on it because you wouldn't see it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you'll be you'll be a lovely greyish blue in no time, Roxy. I'm saying. <laughs> no, she's Susie bought them both flashing colours. So mm. Roxy's got a pink flashing collar and Scooby's got a blue one. So when we go out anywhere, even when we we go and do the pub quiz on a Sunday night and the dogs sit under the table, when we come out now it's dark. So on goes the flashing collars and Fantastic. do a little and disco you can movie see the way as well, can't you? So. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah, wonderful. She's very jealous because she's getting all the attention. <laughs> Oh, Susie gets yeah. quite annoyed though because she bought Scooby, she feeds Scooby, she takes Scooby to the vets, and as soon as I come in the door, she, he runs away from her and comes and sits on my lap. 
Oh. So she, <laughs> he's, he's, he's not been particularly loyal to her, today, but he's a great dog. <laughs> It I think it's because the best Roxy's dogs are the boy. least loyal I've found. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Roxy's pretty good. She's both our dog, really, but she's always to Susie's dog, really, at the end of the day. She'll always go and lay with her and go and see her. If I take her out for a walk, she won't come. If Susie puts her coat on, she'll be straight out the door. But it, it is, <laughs> And that's a rescue thing. I mean, I, I used to have rescues as well. I used to have Dalmatians. I rescued a couple oh. of deaf ones. And, oh. um, they're, they're good, but they've always got... You're always going to have a couple of issues. But you mm. need to work it out. They're not, they're not insurmountable. No, of she's course. had a few, but you just you work. You just find out. Well, why would she want to do that, or why wouldn't she want to do that? And you find a way around it, really. I guess the biggest issue with taking on a rescue is that there's going to be a certain, in, in some regards, depending on where they've come from, there's going to be a potential for a certain amount of psychological issues. Yeah. That. It isn't all like malnourishment or, you know, uh, loss of fur or anything like that. Sometimes it's sometimes up, it's up here. And uh, have you found that you've sort of reached out for, to any behaviourists or anything to, to help in, in previous experiences? Or do you know that other people have, you know, drawn strength from those kind of things? Or what's your view on that? Yes, I think you're right. I think most rescues, especially those who've um, been ill-treated, uh, it's going to affect them like it would affect you or me. Um, Roxy's biggest thing, or her biggest fear, I think, is is being hit or being beaten. So if you move suddenly or you might swing your arm out, um, anything like that, she will cower. The ball thrower is one of them as well. Yeah. The Scooby has to do a lot of exercise. So I've got one of those plastic ball throwers. And um, Roxy doesn't go after the ball, she just stands and watches. But if I call her over, if I've got the ball thrower in my hand, I'll call her over. And she'll come to me while I've got it in my hand. And I do it deliberately because I don't want her to be scared of it. But if Scooby comes back and I move, as she's coming to me, if I'm holding it, she cowers every time, yeah. even now. And she's never That's... had anything from us. No. She's never been hit oh, by us in, in the four years. But it's it's one of those things. It's just ingrained in yeah. her, really. And she's better. She does mm. come to me. And I deliberately hold it out and, and say, come on, Roxy, come to me. And she'll come. But if I move, she'll, she'll still cower. That, that's I think that's the the biggest thing that yeah. the biggest thing that affects her. I think is that fear of being hit. Um, but she she really has just been so easy. Um, and people say to us, yeah. "Oh, wow, what what breed is she?" And say, "Well, she's a Kerry Blue Terrier." And you talk about the breed, and then they say, "Oh, well, we're thinking about getting a dog. We might we might think about a Kerry Blue Terrier." And it's like <laughs> whoa, just, whoa, whoa, just, uh, on. just do your research <laughs> yeah. first. Yes. Yeah. Um, the exception that yeah. proves the rule, really. Yeah. Um, but no, she, she, she's she's fantastic. She really is. Next year or a year or two's time, there will be more and more rescues, more and more dogs out there who need a home, and it's really quite mm. irresponsible. I think of these. Yes. it's quite sad for a lot of people, really. I mean, you spend you know fifteen hundred quid, two thousand pounds on a dog, and then give up on it really quickly. Not everybody, obviously, but there's different circumstances. But of course, I, I don't understand with all breeds really how people get a dog but don't research it. I mean, when I got my first Dalmatian, it, you know, we knew we were going to get a rescue dog. We went to the rescue centre years ago and um, I, want, I didn't know what dog I wanted. Uh, and the lady, you had, I had to have an interview before I could even go in there and see the dogs. And um, at the time I was married and I had two young children and uh, the lady said, I've got the perfect dog for you. She picked the dog for me. She said, this is the one for you. And it was an eight month old Dalmatian that had a broken leg and it was deaf. And I said, no, I'm not having that. And I went home read up on it and went back again and I'd never, and I thought, well, hang on, Dalmatia should be perfect because I like exercise, I like being out and about. Yep. So you need to match the dog to your lifestyle. And I think yes. that's where an awful lot of people go wrong yeah. with it, really. Yeah, of course. And yeah, we, I've, we, well, I've done both. I've had puppies, I've had Alfie and, and now Scooby, um, and I've had rescues. And certainly of all the dogs I've had, Roxy's the most rewarding. Seeing her confidence and she didn't bark for the first year. And now, when anyone comes to the door, she sounds ferocious. I oh, mean, she's found really her voice. Yeah. <laughs> she sounds like a, a, a massive a rock yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but, you know, seeing her, her grow, learning to play, um, getting her confidence, looking healthy. You know, her coat's gone silver now in places. She's She's got muscle tone. And, you know, it's just, it's been so rewarding. That's absolutely wonderful. So her, her leg strength has properly... Come in then. Oh, yeah. 
and that was really within a matter of weeks really you know yeah. with a bit of exercise and and freedom to move about it her, her strength came back really quickly and proper food as well yeah. i don't think she'd been fed properly either so nice well you've clearly invested a huge amount of time and love into roxy and it's clearly showing come back from North Devon and uh, we went down to Linton for a week about two weeks ago three weeks ago yeah, yeah. and we've already booked up to go to Brixham in Devon next April that's our favorite place oh, um, we pretty much like the southwest um, that's where we like to go we like the beaches we like to take the dogs on the beach and, and see them run around and what's your so, what's your favorite beach down there for taking dogs Goodrington Sands is my favourite yeah. in Paynton. Yeah. It's just around the corner from Brixham. We uh, rescued a dog called Blue from uh, Nottingham and he was advertised on the phone. And Susie rang me and said, look, can we rescue this dog? And he had no fur. He was as bald as they come. He'd been loose in London for a long period of time. And a lady in Nottingham had got him via another rescue group and uh, advertised him up as she couldn't keep him. She had too many dogs already and she needed someone to have him. Well, the rescue got... Hooked. The rescue passed on messages mm -hmm. and everybody went, and Susie went, can we have him? I said, right, well, okay. So on the Good Friday, we drove up to Nottingham, knocked on the door of this lady's house and she, she answered the door and she'd got blue and he was in a red plastic coat because he had no fur. And I sort of looked at Susie and she looked at me and I thought, oh, we can't have this dog. But then again, what are you going to do? You're here now, what are we going to do? So we took him home and um, he was a bit of a nightmare because he was completely feral and uh, he was hard work. And we had him for quite a few weeks, but as soon as you went out the house, he would wee and poo straight away. Yeah, we went to Devon with him and uh, it's his first ever time away, I think. And uh, we went to Goodwin's and Sanders and there weren't many people about. And I said to Susie, shall we let the dogs off? She went, oh, are you sure? I went, yeah, 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 they'll be fine. So I let the dogs off. Kizzy ran one way, Blue ran the other across this beach, <laughs> and neither of them came back when we called them. And she going, oh my God, oh my God. No, they'll be back in a minute. And there was a breakwater at the back of the beach. Mm. And uh, Susie didn't know this, but I've always gone to Brixham on holidays. Or something. Okay, so you know quite The well. other side of it, there is a field and a, a play area, and there's a little lake with a headlows on it. And they'd gone over that, and she thought there was a drop on the other side. So we are running across the beach to go and get the dogs back. It was literally, no, no, they'll be fine. I let them off the lead and they just went, Phew. <laughs> It was like they planned it. It was like they yeah. sort of spoke to each other and said, right, the minute they unclip our leads, you go. <laughs> yeah. Where can I start with Roxy? Um, she's just an absolute delight. She was in such a state when we first brought her home. She, you know, she stank. She had, I thought she might have been blind in one eye because it was so blurry and, and with, with mess and muck in it. Like um, green around yeah. both her eyes. Yeah. It's like a ring of green around her eyes. Yeah. Um, but good. she's just seeing her grow in confidence and, and enjoy living in a home and having a bed and, and having regular meals. It's, it's amazing that the most basic thing to her is, is you know, is giving her her life back, really. Good girl. You know, we, what we do is a very small part. We've done a couple of home checks. I, I managed to talk to work about a bank account. That's a very small fraction of, of, you know, what other people do, but, you know, it, we're, point, all, we're always here and if ever, you know anyone needs anything doing give us a shout you know we'll see what we can do everybody can do something you know yeah. everybody does something different we've all got different skill sets we've all got different ways of getting something done and uh, everybody can do something and, uh, and that's that's a good thing about it really when you work as a team and everybody's doing a different little piece you know i i never imagined taking on i never even heard of kerry blues until i met susie and alfie but um yeah they are a great breed and uh, I don't ever think I'd want to be without a Kerry Blue now. I love, I love Scooby as well, and I don't think I'd want to be without them, but you can only have so many dogs at a time. <laughs> I don't want to be crazy dog man living in Burton. 
<laughs> there's only so many leads you can have before they start tangling yeah. up. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think I could do three or four, but I mean, Susie yeah. said she can't take two more than two, so we are where we are. <laughs> well, thank you very much for your time this evening. I really appreciate it. And uh, all the best for, well, for all of you. And um, I very much look forward to seeing how you all get on uh, in the future. Maybe we'll catch up again sometime. Mm -hmm.